Okay, I wanted to just show this uh, pinball machine that I have actually designed and put up for free on Thingiverse for a print. Um, it's also allowed to be sold uh, freely by anybody. Don't care. Um, in fact, I want people to do that, hopefully. Um, but... It is, uh, if you have a 3D printer, you can just print it out. It's a, uh, I haven't actually got all the parts for it yet. I have a few things I'm going to be designing and fixing and yada yada still. But I got a, a pressure fitted version of this dust cover thing with a handle on it uh, that I designed. But I haven't put it up yet. But uh, basically how it works is... You have your switch encoder board, which I haven't gotten yet. Um, and then you drop your Nintendo Switch in this. This is actually kind of based off of the Tulsa Arcades version. I went there, I was going to purchase it, and then I just didn't think that $80 was really... I wasn't happy with that price because of the shipping and everything. It just felt like too much of a novelty item, but it was really cool. And I was like, you know what, I have a 3D printer. Why don't I design one myself and I can share it with everybody. And uh, so, right now I don't have the buttons set up completely. I just have two buttons. There's a couple wires in there. I made sure that it, the encoder board would fit. But uh, now... You can load up your pinball stuff. Um, I should have uh, done something with the camera. But uh, let me see. We can get in a little bit closer. Hopefully I can do something. Anyways, let me pull this in a little further. Push it over. Try to center it. So, so this thing has like a cabinet mode. And you can, you know, you'd be able to press the buttons. <laughs> and there's enough holes for uh, nudge as well as uh, any kind of like A for uh, launching the ball and whatever else. Uh, I copied a lot of the design from the Tulsa Arcades thing. Not completely, but um, this is printed in wood, by the way. Um, and this is a hole for the USB cable. Um, so that you can... There's a notch here. Plug in the USB cable. Go in here. And then somebody's going to come up with something perverted. Uh, and then on this side, there's also notches. There's a notch uh, that allows you to plug in your headphones and uh, something else. I think it opens the game card slot, but it's kind of... I don't know. I don't know. You're probably better off just taking it out and putting a card in. But I did leave that open. By the way, this is not actually the final version that I uploaded. This is actually a older version of the cabinet. Um, so, this just, I replaced the, some of the holes a little bit lower, so, for, for, uh, to make it a little more sturdy, so it won't break. <laughs> but, you can, uh, go and play your games, and, and something like, uh, you know, Mars Attacks, uh, is it, what? For some reason, I always say that wrong, and now I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Attack from Mars. <laughs> so. So, yeah, you have your pinball cabinet here. But, of course, you'd be able to use the buttons on there. 
And uh, another thing that was important to me, which I'm actually re printing a replacement right now because I screwed up the measurements. This thing right here on the bottom is part of a riser that I'm creating with legs so that you can play it like a regular pinball table with, with actual legs on it. Already designed the legs, I just got to print them out and uh, check everything. But this basic idea here, which you see is too big, um, it's going to pop in there. And right now it's going to be glued on. The legs will glue on with like a dab of crazy glue under each, under each leg. And then it'll be able to stand up on, on like a regular pinball table. And you can use it like that. But then, of course, you can just take it right out. Or, if you want, you can actually glue the legs to the bottom of this. And uh, then you can have it permanently affixed to that if you would like. But I thought if you want to take it with you or something, you know, you can uh, you can leave the legs at home and, and put it in a bag and uh, use it that way. So, and I keep bumping into the camera. Anyways, so that's that. So this isn't all the completed stuff, but it's just what I have right now printed out. And like I said, I got this dust cover here, so if you want to put it over there. And I got the new updated version, which is going to be pressure fit, and it has a knob on it, and you just put it in, you use the knob to pull it out. And that's about it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do some more 3D printed videos, 3D printing videos. I actually thought it would be really cool to print this out of something like this. This is Amelin. It's a dual tone or whatever dual color print, so it's a little darker. I think it's yeah, brighter, whatever. It's a silk uh, PLA, and this prints with no supports. I hate supports, so this also prints with no supports. Nothing that I have on my Thingiverse page requires supports because I hate them. They always destroy my prints if things aren't perfect. Um, but yeah, we also have this backboard, by the way. Okay, I completely forgot to mention the backboard. So you can put art on it. And you could maybe wrap it or, you know, paint it. I'm actually going to... I have... Um, seeing as I painted this out of... Uh, printed this out of wood, I'm actually going to get some stain. And I'm going to stain it a darker color. I forget what the color was that I chose. But uh, I have that coming Sunday. So i got to remove these little buttons. Those come out really easy. And I'm just going to stain the whole thing. But I might even print one with this. Um, this PLA right here. But they also have things like you can have like a... What is it? Like a red and... You know, one that starts red and goes into orange or the other way around. So... And there's also metal PLA. So this is actually 30% wood. So it's wood mixed with PLA. So you have sawdust mixed into PLA. So it's not 100% wood. But, you know, you can try do your best to try and make it look that way. Right now it just looks like cardboard. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that. That would be that. So I'm going to get some kind of artwork for the backboard. And I'm going to stain this one. I think I'm going to print another one. I want to print it in something like this, but then I also want to, you know, print one. It does take a while to print, but I was going to take one and print it, like, and then put, like, a wrap on it or something. Put some kind of artwork wrap type whatever on there, on the side, and, you know, all that, and the backboard, and so that, that's a thing. <laughs> so... There's a link in the description to the to the pinball table. And uh, like I said, if you'd like to sell it or whatever, that's cool. Mm. <laughs> I'm not selling them. Uh, I only have one printer. <laughs> um, it's, it takes way too long to try to do that. With one printer, there would be no way in hell I would be able to be able to do that. So, anyways... Um, that's about it. 
And uh, I got another 3D printer video coming up. Um, I think it's thundering and lightning outside. Um, got another one coming up showing all the upgrades I've done to the printer and and I'm going to talk about my experience with it and stuff like that. So, And I'm also going to try to do a comparison of different PLAs that I use and uh, stuff like that. Anyways, thank you for watching and uh, have a good one.